Dort Podcast with Rich Keith. It's the Dort Podcast. Ryan Davis. It's the Dort Podcast. Hashtag. It's the Hashtag Dort Podcast. Shut up. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hashtag Dork. My name is Rich Keefe, joined as always by Davey Eyeballs. He is Rick Rude Von Dick, dude. He is Dave Ravid Von David. All hail the king of ginger ale. It's Ryan. Davey, Davey, how are you? You got to struggle. You got you had a tough time getting through that one. I was, I'm all, I'm all spinning. My head's spinning. Your head's spinning all over the place. That was good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Actually, uh, let me start out. I got two different things for you. First up, let me ask you a question that is on a lot of people's minds probably right now. You got a, a big boner for this eclipse tomorrow or what? I don't. Um, but I, I am I'm gonna watch it. Sure. I'm gonna get my welder's helmet, get out there. Yep. Every 20 years. Not family. every 20 years, but the next one's not for 20 years. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know, I'm have you been hearing this thing that people are like, you gotta keep your pets in the three hours ahead of the time and three hours after. Have you heard this whole thing that people are going I've crazy? Heard that. I heard people going crazy though. People are going crazy oh, for this. I've thing. heard yeah, this is nuts. So like, people are like, oh, well, you can't have animals out three hours prior and three hours after the eclipse. It's like, well, there's animals in the water. They don't just drop dead. Like, not every bird. I don't think so. Imagine really, like, if that happened. We'd be in a lot right? of trouble. We'd be, We'd in, be a in a lot, lot of, of trouble. trouble. Yeah. Then there's, like, part, yeah. People, like, there's people who don't have school. Like, they're canceling school places? Yeah. They're not canceling school. Um, Alex Jones is on Twitter saying that this is, like, how the Illuminati are going to usher in their new world order. It's Perhaps. a hoax. So I think it's a yeah. real eclipse. I think there's going to be an actual eclipse tomorrow. I just didn't understand the, the like the freaking out and shutting down of the schools. Is it you're afraid they're going to look at it and they're going to go blind? Are you afraid that in that moment of darkness there's going to be a lot of looting? Like what what is the concern <laughs> in school? No, it's funny though. My daughter, my younger daughter's school sent out an email basically being like, "We're going to talk about it, but we're not letting the kids look at it because all you need is one yeah. kid." taking the glasses off or whatever you know frying his eyes well I pick, up, I pick up little cc at 245 and i think the thing is peak is 330 it's like 3 3 30 right so like yeah. we should be like getting home by then but crazy anyway last week you had a or the last time we did a live episode you had a fantastic should i have bought this so admittedly yours is better but allow me to write off the rip <laughs> That's right. It's should I have bought this? And uh, send us your should I have bought this to dorkpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, a photo of what you bought, uh, how much it cost, minimum $25, and a brief description. And then Davey and I will answer the question, should I have bought this? So Davey had the lightsaber. You can go back yeah. to weeks ago. Tremendous. Uh, an absolute yes on that one. It's displayed prominently behind him. And that's the other thing. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see all these photos. So even if you listen to the podcast normally, you can always jump on the YouTube ch uh, channel and see all the shit. So as you can tell, I am wearing a basketball jersey. Yes. And uh, so look at this. It's the Toronto Raptors purple with the big fucking dinosaur. Look at these dribbling yep. a basketball. Look at him look dribbling at him. the basketball. Look at him. He's got his eyes up, right? Eyes up, looking for maybe a eyes teammate. Eyes up, head up. And uh, I would say, like, it's... It's not Vince Carter or Tracy McGrady. Both of those guys synonymous with the Raptors. Both are very good Raptors. This is a Damon Stoudemire jersey. This is exactly. Mighty Mouse himself, Damon Stoudemire, which I knew you were a fan. Yeah, huge fan. And it's funny because our, our next episode, not this one, but the very next one we're going to do is all of the best stuff from 1997. And it was very much a coincidence, but Damon Stoudemire, Mighty Mouse, was with the Raptors from like 95 to 98. So he was... In 97, rocking cool. this very yeah. jersey. So, And that's a cool. slick jersey. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty sweet. Yep. All right, so you got to guess how much it costs. And I have a little story there because there's a there's a base price. Then yep. I found a I found a coupon. I found a 20% off coupon. And then I also had a gift card. So that's basic. But so you can guess and you guess the guess the top top price. And okay. Then you can go from there. So top top price. I'm gonna go. We're a little tanky top like that. I'm going to say $60 is like if you bought it online at some like NBA shop. It's probably like 60 bucks. Uh, it is way more than that, sir. Is it this really? Is, yo, yeah, dude. These are the the throwback. This is a Mitchell and Ness. Oh, it's a Mitchell and Ness. Okay, so I'm going to say. I got it through. I, I got it through. Um, what was it? Lid's locker room. But it's a sure. Mitchell and Ness jersey. Hardwood. Oh, so that's the real deal. 
the swing man. So okay. then, yeah. Can I change my answer then? You can change your guess. I'm gonna go eighty dollars. Dude, it is more than that. Oh, we aren't supposed to tell me that. And then oh, so so twenty percent off of that would be uh seventy two dollars. And then you had a gift certificate. So I'm gonna say it's still gonna be over twenty five, right? So you my Dude. guess what you paid for it thirty five dollars. <laughs> Dude, it's way more than that. I mean, you don't, you don't know jerseys. You don't, I don't know jerseys. So Christopher Bernard in the chat, it's not that much. So there's different ones. So he guessed 285. It's not the big. There's like the super duper authentic one, which right. is like insane. This is what they call the swing man. And so it is it's like the middle. It's 134.99. So it's $135 out the door. Right. However, 20% off stuff, of that. Uh, yeah, I bought stuff online. I found like a promo code. Boom, 20% off of that. So that was like 20 seven dollars off right. and then i had a 40 dollar gift card so i ended up paying 60 bucks i think but okay if you paid 60 bucks for that yeah, yeah. hell yeah this is how we do it my wife didn't I... send a purchase at all and i told her well <laughs> you don't have to i'm like i'll wear it to the pool i'll wear it to the beach She's like you're not gonna like wear that out, are you? I'm like, well, what have you seen me wear a jersey out? Yeah, I don't wear jerseys out, but like if we go to the beach, like you said, the beach pool, right? I'm hanging out, I'm mowing the lawn. I'm fucking yes. rocking a jersey, rocking a goddamn jerseys. I needed off the jersey collection. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I have baseball and hockey jerseys. That's it. So I've yeah. never actually, I've actually owned one basketball jersey. Yeah, um, it's the one that guy makes. It was like the Boston, but it had like the in Quincy, like the water tower. Oh, on the side. did the cool new Celtics logo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 those are sick. So that's the only, and it's a zero. It's, you know, no name on it, but yeah, we're the only jersey I've ever bought. I'm a basketball football guy. I haven't bought a new one. I mean, this is the newest one in a long time, but I uh, love it. So there you go. Anyway, send yours into dorkpodcast at gmail.com. Let's get to this. All right, as we are recording this, uh, WrestleMania Night 2 is uh, going on right now. WrestleMania Night 1, I would say, good. Uh, it was not great. It was not bad. It was not in the middle. I thought overall it was good. Uh, highlight to me, Sami Zayn and uh, Gunther. Good uh, intercontinental title match. Mm -hmm. The tag match at the end had some big spots. The Rock looks like a million bucks. It's crazy. Like, watching The Rock wrestle in 2024 in the ring with like roman reigns and seth yeah. rollins and you're like it literally is like a video game where you can just like play as any character in their prime like, like with like a guy that's like not from their generation like that's right. what it was he's like that's walking like three around generations like, of wrestlers in like yeah, one match like, the fucking rock is right there yeah so um it was good and and uh roman reigns and cody are gonna have their match in a little bit and uh, we'll probably be done recording by then. But anyway, solid. WrestleMania 40. I'll take it. Uh, right. This is big news. This is exciting stuff. Tim Robinson's HBO show has been greenlit. It's called The Chair Company. Where uh, the, yeah, the premise ahead. of this is I can't think of a more perfect show. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we had a while ago in the news uh, that he was pushing for a show, not pushing for a show, but he was uh, like, uh, he had a show shopping it, shopping yeah. a show that involved like him and his nephew in like a driving school together. Yeah. And I was like, all right, that sounds pretty funny. But, uh, but this one's a little bit, this one's a little bit different. This one's called the chair company. And so the premise is that, that he, he stumbles. Oh, yeah, so sorry. Upon so, sorry so, like, yeah. Yeah. At, so he has an embarrassing incident at work and then Tim chokes on Robinson a hot dog. Then, but Jones on a hot dog invents a vacuum to get the hot dog out because nobody should be judged on one bad day. No, he finds himself investigating a far reaching conspiracy. So you can only imagine like some shit happened and he's like, no, that's real or whatever. And then like, they're like, dude, no, and they all make fun of him. And then he just goes down like this rabbit hole. I can't wait to see this show. I really can't. I can't. I can't. Uh, 
And then uh, that guy, uh, Zach Kanan, is also doing right. it with him, who co-created I Think You Should Leave, and uh, I believe he's from Newton. He's definitely a Massachusetts guy. Is he really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Newton's a hotbed for comedy writers. Yes, it is. And just, just yeah. like people in the biz. People or just in the show biz. Just people in the biz. The Affleck brothers, Damon, uh, John Krasinski, BJ Novak, yeah. Kanan. Louis C.K.? Louis C.K. Well, mm. yeah. Let's leave him off the list. I don't know. I don't know. Is he back? I don't know. Can we talk about I think him? So. Again? I don't know. Yeah. He out of all the ones, he was sort of like uh they're like, I think we have to probably cancel, but then they're like, I don't right. know. Like compared to the other <laughs> stuff, like what are we doing? Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Uh good for him. This is this is a good week for me. So you get the Tim Robinson news, mm -hmm. and then fucking Will Forte is gonna be in a Netflix show coming out May 9th called Bodkin. Where he's a podcaster, and there's a good line at the beginning where, like, he and his partner are at like a door, and they're like, "Hey, we're looking for so and so." It's like, "Are you the podcasters?" And like, "Yes, we are." They just slam the door in their face. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a really good like dark comedy mm -hmm. with him because it takes place it's in Ireland, right? And he's there looking for like Ireland's first and only serial killer. I'm I love the I love the premise. Yeah, it's great. And Will Forte is fantastic in everything. Like he really is. Like even like stupid shit he's in. He kills. Like, did you it. see the Tim and Eric movie? No, you know what? I don't Alan Bisherman. Oh, you, all you need to do is just like watch his scene in it, and you'd be like, "That's all I ever needed to see of that movie." Dude, how about when we were like the thing from Comedy Bang Bang that we were talking about a couple weeks ago, <laughs> right, a couple months ago, where he was that the was... pilot, and like oh. everybody's like just trying not to like piss themselves laughing. It's like three <laughs> other like hysterical guys, and he's just going on and on about like. Nobody Just please, after this, Google Tim and Eric Alan Bishopman. All right, he owns a sword. He owns a sword store in the mall. Fuck yes! <laughs> All right, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Uh, Last Man on Earth is one of the great answers when people are like, "What show got canceled before like it, it like should have or like yep. they, they? I think they only needed like one more season to wrap it up. Like it was close. Like they were they had a few seasons and they like cut it off. And it oh, on a cliffhanger. Yeah, do you hear this dingaling who's doing who did Westworld? Jonathan, oh, not Jonathan Nolan. Uh, yeah, yeah it Jonathan, is. Yeah, Jonathan Nolan. So, yeah, I, I'm I still need to finish it. Like, buddy, you had three seasons to wrap that shit up. I'm done with it. I was done. Yeah, with pretty early. Really really no one I wants it. Season one. I liked it. Season one was awesome. Yeah. Season was, two was like good, and then it was like, what did you do? No. Yeah. Uh, we got some Marvel casting news for you. How about Julia Gardner from Ozark? Ozark, by the way, not Ozarks. A lot of people say Ozarks, and I always no. kind of chuckle a little bit. I'm like, are you doing that on purpose, or are you doing that you don't know? Yeah. Like, oh, you guys seen Ozarks? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's the Ozarks that. when they refer to the mountain range, but like Ozark sure. is like Ozark. Yeah, is the show. Yeah. Uh, she's gonna be Silver Surfer. So there's different Silver Surfers in comics. So not uh, Norn Rad. Not gonna be that version of right. it. But what do you think of the Julia Gardner Silver Surfer? See, I, I don't mind this at all, especially if it's going to take place in another universe at another time, because it looks like the 50s or 60s or something, right? That they're yeah, doing this. So. And, um, the 60s, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, people get so pissed off at like the wrong things. It's like, no, it's not that Silver Surfer. Like, they don't understand it. And why does everything have to be a woman? Oh. Like, it's a, that <laughs> character was always a woman. There's right. always been a female Silver Surfer. I just surfer. like that they're not fucking making us, making us wait for Silver Surfer. It's like, the MCU hasn't right. had a Fantastic Four for, I mean, the entire MCU run, which started in 08. We haven't had Fantastic Four. And then Silver Surfer is one of the great characters ever. And then so mm -hmm. at least a, any version of Silver Surfer, I'll take and see how it goes. Uh, also good news. So Daredevil Born Again, when it first was announced that they were bringing Daredevil to Disney Plus, it was very confusing because you're like, is this a new thing? But it has Charlie Cox. Is it essentially a season four? Like what? Like, what is it? Mm -hmm. and i still think it's kind of a little bit of both however they keep casting all the people from the netflix show including uh the most recent one is kingpin's wife vanessa mm -hmm. the, the report a few months ago was they were going to have a, they were going to recast her and now they're not that that actress from the netflix series is going to be in this the actor who played bullseye john bernthal who played punisher foggy and karen and obviously kingpin and daredevil so like what started out as like hey we're gonna do our own thing like they must have gotten so much pushback on that been like just do the dare just do daredevil again do more daredevil 
Yeah, and I think it's 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 great timing because I don't know if you've noticed this too, but like Hulu and Disney Plus are now starting to merge. Yes. And yep. you have stuff that like if you like thought, oh, this this will never be on Disney, like dead the Deadpool movies, I think, are on they are Hulu now. Yeah, um, no, so it's like on Disney Plus. Yeah, and there's a lot of like adult content on there, but like it's it's yeah. a perfect time to bring this in where there's like that synergy, so you don't have to worry about and the photo, the set photos of Bernthal and uh, Charlie Cox, like all bloodied and bashed. Yeah. Like hopefully we're getting. I I I have a feeling we're gonna get what we were promised. I think so. With that yeah, show just out of themselves a little bit. How about this show? I didn't realize it was coming. Maybe maybe I heard about it and then somehow forgot about it. But I saw a trailer for it. We tweeted out at Dork Podcast, and then it's gonna be on May the fourth. Star Wars: Tales of the Empire. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be animated shorts like tales of the jedi which was i love tales of the jedi it's good stuff so tales of the empire so sort of like the other other side of things and the trailer looked pretty good yeah and i'm the animation looks good in 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 the, in the trailer um again it's i like these little short format things they did yes you know you can rip so, through them and it's like canon and then you can get a, like a little extra layer of a character yeah you know, i think the only one um was this, what was the one they did? It was all like the anime, like the anime shorts. Was that that wasn't Tales of the Jedi? That was uh Visions. Um, that was Visions, which I only I don't think Visions is canon. Of. No, it isn't. But. Vision and Visions, I couldn't really get into. It's sort of like Star Wars What If, but yeah. it was like, you like yeah, you could crazy. pick and choose. My kids like them, so mm-hmm. um, I don't think we've talked about this yet, but it's official. We are getting a Happy Gilmore 2. What do you think of that? I just I'm not, I'm not, no. What if I, what if I said Shooter McGavin's going to be in it? Well, you know, who's not going to be in it? A guy who uh, just died, the, the, John Flaherty. I forget his name. John Flaherty, yeah, Jackass is not going to be, he, he needed to be in that. He did need to be in that. And he just, yeah, he just passed this week, uh, yeah. or last week, but. They should have done like I mean, a Cape Fear thing with him where he was like working. They said like Jack and ass on his knuckles and he was like doing chin ups and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting waiting for shooter at the Red Robin or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting there. Uh yeah, I mean, I say the same thing as I do with all comedy sequels. Like most of them are bad, but I feel like I give them all a chance. <laughs> like I'll yeah, be like, hey, I like these characters, like I'll give it a go. It's gonna be a standalone episode. It just kind of has to be given who we are, but yep. not uh, thrilled for it. Did you see the trailer for Cuckoo? I didn't. I know you posted it. I didn't get a chance to watch yeah, it. Dude, not bad. I think it's. Uh, I, I you should watch the trailer. It's it's to me. It feels like it's going to be a good year for horror movies. Like there's a whole bunch of them. We were some of them that are out. I haven't seen yet. Like uh, Late Night with the Devil. That one is, mm-hmm. is already out. This first there's Omen a, is getting good reviews. There's, there's like another a, one I saw. Um, it was one of those like it was in theaters, but you can stream it like almost immediately. This thing stop motion. Have you seen this? No. Oh man. So this no. is like a horror movie. It's like a, a woman is like a claymation artist and she's trying to tell the story about her things look like it looks like a tool video stuff. Oh no shit. Okay. Yeah. So she, and it's like they kind of come to life and stuff. Yeah. Check it out. Stop it. Uh Dead Boy Detective got a trailer. This is coming to Netflix this month and it's in the Sandman universe. I didn't really know much about it, but as soon as they said Sandman universe, I'm like, I'll give it a shot. Are we getting a season 2 of that? They haven't really yes. announced. I think they I are. think there was a lot of hemming and hawing, and I think they finally like they they dragged their feet, but I'm pretty sure they announced that they, they're making it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. And that was really good. Yeah. That yeah. episode with him and Lucifer in that fight. Uh, where they're just like talking to each other. Oh, incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Cuckoo and then Abigail comes out soon. Uh good call in the chat. That I want to see. Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney. I want to mm-hmm. see the nun one. That looks pretty crazy. So I'm in on that. Oh, look at no shit. And Maxine trailer arrives tomorrow. I just finally watched two weeks ago Pearl. I hadn't seen Pearl. Yeah. I saw X like pretty soon X. after it came out. Yeah. I, I saw X. I thought X was solid. I hadn't seen Pearl. Pearl's pretty crazy. Pearl's okay. Gonna check Pearl out. Pearl's good. Yeah. All right. Let's get to this. It's time for Davy's video game minute. Even if it takes more than a minute. All right, Dave, what do you have? Well, I have some sad news. I'm going to kick this off with some sad news. So the game Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was hacked mm. and data mined by these these Craven who started. 
they broke the game to the point where they could play as characters that haven't been released yet. So they like were playing and like they tried to like they basically had to shut the servers down and like <laughs> um uh those characters were Deathstroke and Mr. Freeze. Mm. So I don't know if they, you could play as Deathstroke or Deadshot. You yeah. have to get the two confused. Um yeah. this game is just this poor, poor rock steady. I mean, they just Having had too many time. cooks in the kitchen there. No, I'm having a little bit of a time right now. I, I'm now waiting for when that game in like six months is the free PS. Oh, Plus absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah, and it's good enough to play, but it's just like it's it's the always online microtransaction thing that just absolutely kills it. Yeah, um, that kills the Justice Squad um, I got it. or whatever. Yes. Uh, yeah, I got it. Um, so there's a game coming out. Not so it's coming out next week. I think it's April sixteenth. Um, if you ever played, so this is, I know you haven't played it, but like any of the Ori games that were Microsoft games, um, mm -hmm. there's a game coming out, um, by that studio called no rest for the wicked, which is kind of a mix. It's a mix between like a Diablo and like a souls game. And it actually looks really fucking good. Okay. Right. And I'm waiting to see the reviews on that, but that's one that I'm really excited for. I'm playing like four games right now, simultaneously. Yeah, that's a lot. So I'm playing the show. Yeah, I'm playing course. this game Hi-Fi Rush, which is I, I think I talked about before is actually really good. Playing yep. Tekken. Yep. And the free game this month is like an F1 racing game. And I love my racing games. OK, so I'm That's tearing good. up the streets there. So like, but I'm, you know. Oh, and so the last thing I have. So the BAFTAs, which is like the British Oscars. So the BAFTA, yeah. the BAFTAs have a gaming. They have a game awards. Oh, cool. And by fan vote. Whomst do you think they named the most iconic video game character of all time? Well, the way you're asking, I feel like my answer is not going to be the right answer. I would say Mario. You would say Mario. Yeah. It's British, if that helps. Oh, uh, man. Do you want me to give you another hint? Earthworm Jim. She's British. Oh, Laura Croft. Lara Croft, who's the the Lara awarded Croft the most Terminator. iconic video game character of all time, probably for the wrong reasons, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah, no, I know. I don't yeah. think you can make that game today. <laughs> <laughs> she looked structurally unsound. Yep, correct. Can't do all those flips when you're that top heavy. No, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. But yeah, interesting. Number one. Hmm. Mm. Josh Clark said, Josh said, Leisure Suit Larry. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's not Didn't Leisure Suit Larry. Oh, those games were awesome, though. What of a bitch. Um, all right, that, that it for the uh, the video game minute? Yeah, it'll do it. Right. Y'all ready for bisque? Topic is your time, Ryan. What is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's the topic of the day. And today, it is The Iron Claw, a movie that got kind of lost for us because it came out in december of last year and at yeah. that point we're already into our like best of the year stuff and wrapping up all the you know movies and tv shows and all that stuff so and it was in theaters i didn't get a chance to see it in the theaters and then it took forever to come out digitally or streaming and it's finally down to like six bucks it's still not free anywhere no which is crazy but i was like you know what with wrestlemania i really wanted to see this let's do it so we're talking about the Iron Claw, which is uh, a two-hour and twelve-minute film. It is uh, currently on Roddy T's, eighty-nine percent by the critics, ninety-four percent by the audience. Uh, it is about the Von Erich wrestling family. Uh, so we'll begin as we do with all of our movie and TV reviews, spoiler-free. The Iron Claw, Ryan, did you like it? Uh, I did. I did. Um, I was very happy with the, the the story that was being told i do have some issues with it but um we'll get into that soon but i did and to answer your question yeah, yeah i did like it did you like it i liked it i thought i was gonna love it and maybe Same. maybe the expectations were too high maybe i know too much about the story and not because i'm a genius but because i've seen a lot of wrestling documentaries and i've read sure. wrestling books believe it or not and i mm -hmm. i just even though these guys kind of predate my time as a fan, like it's still big time wrestling history. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I kind of know a little bit about these guys. And I think the actors like Zach Efron and Jeremy Allen white and everybody that was involved, I think they all did a great job. It was more about 
kind of how they chose to do it. Plus, you're packing in a lot of stuff into two hours. It's a lot. And so I understand the reason to cut some stuff out, even though I was kind of pissed about it. But yeah. Yeah. And like there's a there's a dark side of the ring on the Von Erics, plus the Von Erics, like in other dark sides of the ring or other wrestling documentaries, mm -hmm. their names get brought up, right? Like if you're listening to something on the Freebirds, boom, you're gonna get them. You get really just like 80s wrestling or territory yeah, uh, Ter flair, flair yeah. right? You're like Bruiser Brody, like all these guys, it kind of circles back to the to the Von Erics. Um I thought though, like the action was good. Like those guys were great. Like they got jacked because all the Von Erics were ripped to pieces. So those guys got jacked. Like Zach Efron, I guess, kind of walks around like that. Normally, it feels like he's, or at least a lot of his yeah. movies ask him to be jacked like that. <laughs> but I thought it had like a good feel. I thought the wrestling didn't seem like awkward or like no. You know, sports movies, you're like, that doesn't really seem right. Like I feel like the the wrestling scenes seemed solid to me. Yeah, and there was there was some behind the scenes stuff that I had watched just off kind of off the cuff, and so Chavo Guerrero Jr. was like the yeah. guy on set who was like teaching them how to wrestle, which is like, you know, it's a legit you know what? person. I think, was he also the guy on set of the show was Glow? The, with maybe with, uh, I think he might have helped with the wrestling on that TV show too. And he's actually in it. He played the guy who played the Sheik. They I don't think they yeah, yeah. that yeah. was show, yeah, but um. They also had like real wrestlers in there with them because they wanted it to look authentic. Yeah. So yeah. um the only thing that like you said, the Von Eriks, what I know of them, they were mountainous. There were mountains of men. And they I was laughing because they at one point, uh Zach Efron, who plays Kevin Von Eric, they said he was six two. I think Zach Efron's like five six or like five seven. Dude, I think Jeremy Allen White's even shorter, and he played Carrie yeah. Von Eric. It was like a fucking monster. He was, he was probably six two, but like well, ripped. David like, was the biggest, was, right? Yeah, David was probably the biggest one, right? Yeah, but like Carrie shouldn't have been like looking up at every single person he was on the screen with, right? <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but he kind of looked like him. Like he had like the Carrie Von Eric hair. His face yeah. is like kind of Carrie Von Eric ish, but he's right. just so short. Like he's just like a little dude, like the bear, a little, yeah. little tiny little cub. That's what he is. That's all he is. <laughs> Uh, but the story's insane. Like, so whether you know a lot about the Von Erics or very, very little, it is such a wild story. It's it's sad, but it's like a crazy, mm -hmm. crazy, like you wouldn't believe it type story. One that probably should have been made into a movie like 20 years ago, but whatever, they they made it now. Uh yeah. but it's it pretty crazy. And I didn't know. So when I first I knew who the Von Erics were. And I knew all of them were basically at the time I came to know them, like in the like attitude era of like WWF, like um, most of they were all dead. Um, and so I knew they died, but then I watched the dark side of the ring and then I found out the whole story and the mm -hmm. holy shit. I have never seen a movie that had like was based on true events that for sake of time, they had to actually cut some of the awful shit that happened. Yeah. Like, oh, this movie could have been four hours long. Oh, easily. And yeah, as a kid, I, I I like kind of faintly remember the Texas tornado, which mm -hmm. was Kerry Von Eric. And that was like he had a really short stint in the WWF. It was for like two years. He was in one of the Royal Rumbles. He had a, he was an intercontinental champion and he had a feud with Mr. Perfect. Right. And as I was like a little kid for that, but I remember him. But they always refer to him as the Texas Tornado. They would say Kerry Von Eric, but it was always Texas Tornado. There was also the big rumor that one of the times Ultimate Warrior showed up, but like his like they people thought it was Kerry Von Eric to send a message to the real Ultimate Warrior, like, hey, dude, we can just do this without you. Like that's a rumor, right. like a legit rumor. And we had Ross. <laughs> no, I was on an episode of Rossi's podcast, and they were doing all wrestling conspiracy theories. And if you pull up like a side by side of like Kerry Von Eric without like as carrie von eric and then like yeah. that night's version of the ultimate warrior it's pretty convincing like it might have been him like but he can do it you and on one foot dude the fucking one foot for carrie von eric was insane and nobody knew about it no one and knew. it was also in the 80s and 90s where it wasn't i mean even today if you did it it'd be insane but yeah the the technology is not nearly it wasn't nearly what it or it isn't now no. what it was then and like for him to fucking slap on a boot nobody knew and he's competing in full-on matches with one yeah. foot yeah and Crazy. they said that he uh what was the, the lie it was like he crashed his motorcycle they said oh he broke his ankle like really bad so it's like a pin that's why he's limping 
Not that he lost his fucking leg from he literally had down, like, or like shin yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah, like shin down, it was it was over. So like I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a must see. I think wrestling fans have probably already seen it. Oh, yeah. I think as soon as it is free, I don't know where it's gonna pop up, but one of these streaming services it'll pop up on. I would recommend watching it then. Forking over your hard earned money right now. Like I might I might save the six bucks. I'm not mad that I spent it, but I think I might save it. I mean, it's a solid movie. I it mean, is. in a movie yeah. that, in a year that had a bunch of really, really good movies. I mean, this one's it's good. Um, it but, is. um, yeah, like you said, I don't know. Spending buying it for twenty or spending six bucks to rent it is worth it. But I just feel like watching movies now that all the different genres have different ways of like getting you right. Like, did the movie make you like laugh your ass off? Mm-hmm. Did the movie make you cry? Did the movie make you like? just like gasp or like where there's some scenes so crazy that you're just like, what the fuck am I watching? Like there's so yeah. many different things or you super scared. Like, all, and like, I liked the movie. I was from start to finish. I liked it. I wasn't checking my watch, but I was never like, holy shit. I don't think I said, holy shit really ever. No. Maybe part of it's because I knew most of the story, but there were a couple like those, like, uh, stretch face blinks where you, I, I if you're watching on YouTube, I'll do it. It's like this, like the, <laughs> like someone was cutting onions a little bit. Like yeah. there, you got a little misty at times. Oh uh, no, that's true. Trying. I take it back. No, I can. I can actually think of a time where I thought it was that one. Was. Right. It was right. one time. Yep. Where I was like, Phew. you're right. You're right. One line. Yeah. You're right. There was. Um. All right. What is your hashtag dork score for the Iron Claw? It sucks, but I think I'm gonna go like four and a half. Like it's not a five. It's not definitely not a six. I don't think it's quite a five. I'm gonna say four and a half. I'm the same. I was thinking the same thing as soon as I finished watching it, knowing we're going to do the episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could give it a five, but I feel like it would be a really weak five compared to other fives like at the end right. of the year or whatever. And I'm like, no, I feel more confident in four and a half because four and a half is sort of that sweet spot where it's like, yeah, watch it. But if you don't like it, don't come to us and be like, you yeah. didn't like it. Like, we told you it wasn't the greatest thing ever, but we said yeah. it was good. So I but think it's that's not a waste it. of time. No, no. Like, but there no are movies means- that are, yeah, like Roadhouse is a waste of time. The Roadhouse. new Roadhouse is a waste of time. Yeah, this is not, dude. You know it's kind of borderline a waste of time. I watched that uh, Lisa Frankenstein. Yeah, eh, not great. That's a, not it. Was great. such a good idea, but just like yeah, right. Yeah, and the the lead actress was great in it, but it was like yeah, that's nah. the Wasp. Yeah, the Wasp. Yeah, the Wasp was really yeah. good. But I'd be like, she oh, she's like a, she's like a pro golfer too. Yes, like she's like actually, an unreal golfer. Yeah, crazy. She's like, she's like under par. Like it yeah. is insane. It's good... <laughs> All right, so dual four and a halfs for the Iron Claw. Uh, let us know what you guys saw the Iron Claw at Dork Podcast Twitter, Instagram. You can email us uh, as well. So let's get to this. Spoilers! 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 Here come the spoilers! All right, Davey kind of hit on it, but I want to just start the spoilers with this: the yes. Von Eric story is so fucked up that a movie has to say no no too much too much tragedy whereas normally there's based on a true story or inspired by a true story and they put two or three things in there that are kind of fucked up and then you go and you read the story or you just go to wikipedia and they're like that didn't happen or it didn't happen that way yeah dude this movie's so fucked so this movie or this story i should say is so fucked they had uh in the movie five von eric boys yeah in real life there were six there were six they cut out a whole person because it was too much like was, they, cut a, a, they cut out another whole suicide which is crazy so right. in this movie you have the firstborn son who died as a kid yes. right and they reference him they even like they, there's a scene where they show him so like that's obviously a non-wrestling brother the mm-hmm. other five all wrestled David died in Japan, sort of like they say, mm-hmm. and like the intestinal thing or whatever that ended up being. And then you had three suicides, and then Kevin Von Erich, who is the only one that's still living, and he does appear in a bunch of these different um, documentaries. Like I've I've heard him yeah. speak a bunch of times, but they basically kind of took two brother stories and kind of combined them into one because you're like, no, we can't. I don't know if we can handle another suicide. The right. other fucked up thing that I read was that uh david the the one that was getting the first shot at rick flair yeah, yeah. The, world, the real world's championship he um he had a kid who died of sids at like 13 weeks old Jesus Christ. 
So they did they, and like so they didn't mention that. They're like, Jesus, like how yeah. much can the audience take here? But like that's their life. Like that's how that's how much horrible shit they had going on. They also they, Yeah, go ahead. No, I was because they talk about like the Von Eric curse, and there's that scene where like Zach Efron, like he has his first kid and he's like, No, his was there for Ad, Adkison? Yeah, I believe it was Ad, Atkinson. Yeah, Atkinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, No, is that last name Atkinson? He's like, You sure? And he's like, No. Mm-hmm. He's like, But I don't want I don't I'm, I don't want him to deal with that. I don't, oh and his wife's trying to talk him out of it. By the way, him and his wife are still married, which is which is crazy. Which like, is so great cuz as that was one thing I wasn't sure about. I don't remember mm-hmm. him like in any of the stuff that I'd seen and I was like, thank god, like at least there's some like that guy can have some bit of happiness, you know, right. like he does. And how crazy like all the kid all his kids and grandkids basically live on this big ranch with him yeah, like they he all lives in this Yeah. Like crazy ranch in Hawaii. In like Maui, they're all. And they're he's all just there. like, no, I just I hang out here. Like this, that's what I do now. You it's know? awesome. Um, and they they showed him. He was like, uh, in like the dark side. He's like, outside. Like he was doing his interview. I think with like no shoes on. And yeah, yeah. Just, like like he wrestled, and it's just uh <laughs> crazy. But the other thing is, uh, Carrie Von Eric was married and had two kids, which was not included in the documentary. Yep. And he had gotten divorced, and then a year later, that's when he killed himself. But also, they kind of fuck with the timetable a little bit too. So this makes it out to be like he uh, beat Ric Flair, then got on his motorcycle and immediately lost his foot. Whereas, like he beat Ric Flair two years later, he got on yeah. a motorcycle, but he did for real lose a foot. And then come back and wrestle, including his whole WWF run. And like almost died, right? So like it, it wasn't just like the loss of the leg. Like he almost died in that crack because he wasn't wearing a helmet. Remember yeah. that was like that was a whole thing. And then um, but yeah, it's just wild to me that like they cut out an entire brother. Yeah, I know. That's what I was like. And like the whole shit that didn't sit right with me. And the thing with uh Fritz like going crazy and like waving guns at him and like shooting up the house, like they didn't do any of that. And didn't like they, didn't their mom just take off? Like she just left, right? I believe Fritz, and they sort of allude to it at the end, but like they got divorced. I believe the parents, I mean, got divorced, I believe, before Carrie Von Eric committed suicide. Yeah. Also, Fritz found Carrie Von Eric. Kevin did not find Carrie Von Eric. Yeah. But it just like that. Who's it? Chris that they don't mention at all. Chris Von Eric. Yeah. Cause it was it Michael they used. So they kind of combined Michael, a little bit yeah. of Chris's life story with Michael's story and they kind of, which i feel like is an odd choice like if you're gonna tell this insane story like tell the story yeah and but like i think the director said like it was too much like you said it was too much like have you ever seen a true story too fucked up to be a movie no like that's crazy this has got to be the first yeah it's always the other way they always like they'll they'll add add a storyline that never happened right or a character that never existed i can't believe they had to take one out neighbor it's like no he didn't get the neighbor (laughs) yes we had to put yeah, something they had in to there. Take a whole guy out of the whole movie just to make it palatable for audiences. It was nuts, but there was it but, was yeah. in the eighties. Uh, I I don't think we, especially in the Northeast and like our age, like our age, we're all about like WWF. WWF right. was the thing, and it was nationwide. But like in the eighties, well, and even prior to, like the territories in wrestling were so big, and the fact that the Von Erichs and like the Freebirds could sell out Texas Stadium. And they were there was a two or three year run where they were like the Beatles, like they were like the mm-hmm. most famous thing in the world. People would go crazy if they saw the Von Erichs. And, and then, I think what's uh, yeah, what's nuts too is like the idea of like the world champion that they kind of like hinted at, but like so what they would do, right? If I'm not, they had all these different territories all over the nation, and then each of their champions, they would do like one big show, mm-hmm. and whoever won that was the world champion. Right? Is that I how it works? Think, I think so. And like, I don't really understand like the whole like NWA championship. And then they would, that's like the National Wrestling Alliance, I believe. And right. so they they might be able to take like the one main belt and then travel around with it. But yeah. then it was also interesting to me, like, even though there were these territories, you also had to go over there and like how you did in Japan, they would feel better about you or not. Cause like you're representing the NWA champion. So like right. we need everybody in the world to like believe you or whatever, but it's such like an incestuous business too. Like all those guys overlap. Like if you just even look up some of the Von Eric's like 
uh, old matches or old feuds like like Jake the Snake's in there, like mm-hmm. Jerry the King Lawler's in there from his time. Obviously, Ric Flair, he brings together so many people. He's wrestled everybody. Yeah, you watched that documentary with him, right? Yeah. Which it didn't really go as there as I wanted it to, but he does a good job of explaining like he got passed around. It's like all these mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. and willingly like he you know when it wasn't like it was yeah. against his will he yeah, loved, yeah. still loves it i think a little too much yeah dude, the guy who played rick flair in this movie was horrible yeah not great he, he was so bad the guy who played harley race i thought was pretty good mm-hmm. the guy who played rick flair was trash and one thing i don't really understand is could they have used a real old promo maybe they would have had to pay flair or something but like oh god yeah or or mcmahon because he owned, yeah. te- I mean, technically they own all that stuff now. Maybe, but like, so in the background of one of the scenes, they have the mom watching like Carrie Von Eric's SummerSlam match right. in WWF, and like that's the real footage, right? Like they show like Mister mm-hmm. Perfect on the outside. Like I don't, I'm pretty sure that was like the real, real footage. It was, it so, was quick, but it was the real footage. Yeah. One of the things, like if you wanted to hire the actor to do some of the moves and wrestle, like as Ric Flair, I mean, do and like wrestle, I think fine. But they have this whole promo that he's doing. And he was so bad, and he's like trying to do a Ric Flair. I'm like, can't we just get the 30 second real Ric Flair cut and use that? That would have been better. Uh, yeah, unless you didn't want to pay Ric Flair, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Uh, yeah, but it was interesting too. And like, and then just like the different brothers trying to like do their promos and everything else. And like, also the whole story about Kerry Von Eric was a uh, Olympic. Was it Olympic discus? Discus. Or, discus. Olympic discus. But that was fucking 1980, the year that they boycotted the Olympics. Yep. How much shit luck that is. Well, it's Von Eric luck, right? It's, uh, it is fits in with everything. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, What was the real emotional part to you? The last line when he says to his kids, like, I used to be a brother. Yeah. When he's, like, he's watching his kids play football and he was there, yeah. he started crying and they're like, you know, we'll be your brothers. Like, that was you know, brutal. Like that. Like, yeah, I used to be a brother. That was another, yeah, that was, that was tough. That was also a switcheroo. So Kevin Von Erich's first two kids are actually girls. And mm-hmm. then like his next two kids are boys. But I think so they could have that moment in there. The movie flipped it so they could have the brothers yeah. line, which makes sense. But which how about imagine? the dude, Fritz Von Erich, uh, the dude from Mindhunter. He was great. He was, he was really good. He was, he was a bit of a prick. Yeah, dude. How about like the relationships though? Like, uh, one of the brothers wanted to like talk to his mom about something like serious, and she's like, "That's what your brothers are for. Like, go talk to them." I was like, "Yeah, all right." It was yeah. He was worried. Uh, no, it's like they were pushing. Uh, what's his name? Michael. Michael, too much. He's like, "Dad's too hard on Michael," and she's like, "That's between them." (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. He just kind of like backed away. Like, all right. See you Mm -hmm. later. That lady was really good in news radio. So I remember her she from. Was, and Liar Liar. And Liar Liar, right? Yeah. Here comes the claw. Oh, the claw. Here the comes claw. the claw, the iron claw. Is that why she got this movie, you think? The claw. Think... Yeah. Carrie always doing the claw was one of my favorite parts of that movie. It's like, it's the claw. She's like, you don't, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. <laughs> All right. Anything else about uh, the iron claw, which again, worth good. a watch. But good I would say, was... yeah. Watch the uh, watch Dark Side of the Ring. If you really want to know that story, watch that. I agree. And you can hear from Kevin himself, and they they get into the whole thing. It's mm-hmm. it's wild. But yeah, then I, you can go down. Then you can end up going down like a whole rabbit hole of like '80s wrestling. I'll spend days on like Wikipedia, going from like one story to the next to the next, just on like mid '80s territory wrestling, and it's like it's insane. Yeah, um, it's nuts. All right, very good. So. Uh, what we're going to do now is if you're watching on YouTube, jump over to the other link because we're going to do the best of 97. When, uh, when Dave and I did, back in the day, take take a trip inside your time machine to 1997 and we're going to relive some of those moments. Uh, thanks to, for listening to this one and we will uh, talk to you soon.